from God this morning, and uh, as we prepare to open up God's Word this morning and hear from Him, will you join me in a word of prayer? God, we thank you so much for the name of Jesus and the powerful name that it is. Lord, the name that has brought us joy and hope and forgiveness, eternal life, and everything we need for this life. Lord, we thank you for Him. Lord, we come to listen to you this morning. God, um, we are your children, and we have gathered to hear our Father speak. And so, Lord, speak to us. Open up our hearts and minds to hear what it is you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, well, we want to uh, talk this morning about, spiritual, about a journey, about our spiritual journey. Everyone here is on a spiritual journey. We're just all in different places on that spiritual journey. As I was thinking about journeys, I was thinking about a couple years ago, I decided that I wanted to do a 100-mile bike ride because I'm an idiot. And, um, uh, and, uh, but so I, I, my son rides a bike too, and so we decided we'd do this ride together. And it was like the Conejo Cruise or something like that. And it was anything but a cruise, man. We started off in Thousand Oaks and went up to Moore Park and then up through Moore Park and then back down somewhere, man, I don't even know where we were, but through Oxnard, Ventura, PCH, all the way back somewhere, I don't know, it was windy and it was weird, and then, um, and, but then there was this 10-mile stretch that went straight up from the beach all the way up to somewhere up in Westlake, and I was like, oh man, I don't want to do that. I knew, I knew that I looked at that route over and over, and I went, that stretch, that is not fun. And so, we, and so we started trekking up that thing, and it just kept going and going, and at, at, and at that point, we're probably 70, 60, 60 miles in, 70 miles in, something like that. And I remember going up this road, and, and, and because it was steep enough, I started going side to side so it wouldn't be quite as steep, and I was just, because my legs were dying, and all I could think about was how hungry I was, and how thirsty I was, and, and, it was, and how much my legs hurt, and all that stuff, and we finally get to the top, and then... Instead of going back towards Thousand Oaks, we'd headed out towards Agora, and then all, and I was like, oh man, I know a shortcut. And, uh, and, and but there was no shortcut, and, and, and you think you're taking off with like a hundred people, and by the time you get that far into it, it's just me and my son. And it's like, we're all alone, and we're probably the last ones on the course. And, and I felt like we were like failing, and we were dying, and we, find, and we, anyway, we took these little breaks, and then it started raining, and I, <laughs> come on, really? And, and so we get the rain going, and then, and then my son started getting cramps, and so now we're going slower, and I'm thinking, man, they're going to close everything down, and, uh, but anyway, suffice it to say, I haven't done that again, um, but it was, it was quite the journey, and I just remember there was all these little stages along the journey where I was feeling different things, I was getting discouraged, I was getting distracted, I was, it was all these things just, and it was just sometimes all it could take is just to keep my legs going forward. We ended up finishing and doing just fine, and we weren't even the last people in, which was awesome. So, um, but, uh, but, and but we, but we made the journey, but it wasn't a fun journey for most of the part. It was great to be with my son half the time because the other time he was cramping and I was like, I just got to get done, so I left him in the dust. And then, <laughs> I know, right? Good dad. And that, but I waited for him when it started raining, and, um, and then he caught up and we kind of figured out how to do life together, and we did it together, but, it, but, um, but we eventually made it through. But the journey wasn't easy. And, you know, I, th- I, think about our, I think about our life, and I think about the, the, the journey that all of us have spiritually, and you know what? It's, it, the, it is not easy. There are parts where we get discouraged and distracted and, and all sorts of things, and yet there is this finish line that's worth it to be there. And so today, as we talk about this spiritual journey, I want to I talk about some of the things that, that, that discourage us along the way and keep us from wanting to go move forward, and some of the things that we can do this morning that will help us to, to make it all the way to the end. There's a pass, the passage of Scripture I want us to read today is Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. So if you have your Bibles and your devices, you can open up to there. Colossians chapter 2 
verses 1 through 7. And here's Paul, and he's talking to, the, to this church. He's writing to them, and he knows that they're on a spiritual journey. And he knows that that journey is difficult, and he's writing about that. He's writing to encourage them. He says this, For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. For though I am absent in the body, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. So here's Paul. And he is talking to them about, about how to continue on and to stay encouraged in this spiritual journey that they're on. And yet he knows there's all sorts of things against them. There's all sorts of things going against them as far as making progress and continue and even wanting to continue in on this journey. And so as he does that, he says a few things. And so I want us to look at some of the things he talks about. And, and, and first of all, he talks about what gets us off track on our spiritual journey. So what gets us off track on our spiritual journey? Well, the first thing that, that he says in this is he says um, that, their hearts, that, that, that their hearts may be encouraged. One of the things that gets us off track on our spiritual journey is this, is we get discouraged. We get discouraged, and I don't know about you, but there are all sorts of things that happen to get me discouraged. I, I, um, I used to play... I, I, I'm, I hesitate to say I used to play golf. I used to play at golf. Um, I am horrible at golf. I don't know how to say that more precisely. I am horrible. But I played for a long time. I had a nice set of clubs, ping golf clubs. I had all these nice clubs, and I'd go out, and I'd hit buckets and buckets and buckets of balls, and I, at, at one point, had lessons. I had people who, who I golf with who knew how to play golf, and they'd come, and they'd tell me how to do this and that and the other thing. And I'd get out on the course, and I would play horrible. It was a miracle if I could even... If I could even come close to a hundred I was always a little bit over that well a little bit a lot bit over that and I was and but I was determined to do better and so I would take more and I'd hit more golf balls and I got and play more and I do and soon I realized I am wasting so much money on something I am awful at <laughs> and I got so discouraged I just went and I put the golf clubs in my garage, and they have sat there for years. Because I got so discouraged that no matter what I did, I couldn't get better. Some of us, I maybe feel like that spiritually. You know what? I know I'm supposed to grow in Christ, and I know I'm supposed to make him, make him progress, and I know I'm supposed to be, be doing all these things, but I don't, I don't, I just keep failing. I just keep doing the wrong things over and over and over again, and the lessons that everybody else seems to get, I keep failing in those things. And some of the things that I'm even supposed to want to do, I don't even really want to do those things. And so why is that? And I get so discouraged that, oh, I just give up. Sometimes we can get discouraged because we feel like maybe it's, maybe we feel like we're all alone in this journey. Like there's nobody else walking alongside of me who's encouraging me, who's strengthening me. I know I've been in that place myself different times where I know that I want to grow spiritually, and, but I feel like, oh, I just... I don't have somebody to bounce that off who's on the same place as I am spiritually. Either somebody's way behind me or way in front of me, and I just feel like I'm just kind of floating out here. And so Paul says, I want you to be encouraged. I know you're on this spiritual journey, but I know you can get, and I know it can get discouraging on that journey. And so I want you to think, are there things that in, in your spiritual life right now where you're discouraged? Where you've fought the same battle over and over and over again and you keep failing over and over again. Or you feel like you're all alone on the journey. Or you feel like nobody understands you. Or you've failed. Or you're not going fast enough. 
There's all sorts of things that can get us. So we just kind of just go, oh, I've tried to figure out who God is, what he wants for me, all that sort of stuff. But you know what? I give up. And you just kind of put everything in the garage and forget about it. That's one of the things that can get us off track on our spiritual journey. A second one is this, we get distracted. And I found that there's, there's a couple things to distract us. Have you heard of the tyranny of the urgent? There's the, there's the urgent and there's the important. The urgent things in life are the things that, oh, I've got to do that now. I've got to pay that bill or it's going to be overdue. I've got to, I've got to do this or it's not going to I've got to get dinner on. I've got to work. I've got to do. You've got to do these things and they come on you immediately and you've just got to deal with them. And so we end up being ruled by the urgent things in our life. We just run from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, and our life is just kind of spins out of control. And, they, and, and because we're so caught up in the urgent things, we spend no time in the important things. Some of us are off track spiritually because we've filled our life with so many things that are urgent that we neglect the important, the things of God. Another thing that, distra- that, that distracts us as well is, is things that are easy. Let me explain. I, um, um, there's a lot of things I like to do, but I tend to gravitate towards the things that are easy. One of the things I like to do, one of the things that, 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 is, that, that, that I want to do is play guitar. I've played guitar off and on for almost 30 years. And I, can, and I can still play some and things like that, but I'd like to be better. I'd like to, I, I'd like to play well. I'd like to be able to play in front of people and all that sort of stuff. And yet, well, you know what that it takes? Practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. And so I, I see my guitar sitting in my house, and, and I go, well, that would be fun to play well, but that's going to take work. So maybe I'll just watch YouTube. Maybe I'll just flip something on TV. That's easier. Maybe I'll read a book. That's easier. And so I gravitate towards the easy. I get distracted by that. Instead of the things I know I, I, that, that are really rewarding at the end, when I've practiced guitar and for a while and I can play things that I hear on the radio, I can imitate things that, I've, that I see other people do, it's really rewarding. It's fun, but it's work. And in our spiritual journey, if we're going to, to make progress, it takes work. It's rewarding, but man, I've got to discipline myself to do things that will help me know God better, to help me obey God better. And so we, we, we get too caught up and we go, yeah, but it would be much easier just to sit down and watch it. It would just be much easier to go to bed early. It would be much easier to sleep in a little later. It would be much easier, easier. And we get distracted by the urgent and we get distracted by the easy. If you're not making progress on your spiritual journey as you think you should, as you'd like to, have you gotten distracted by the urgent? Is your calendar so full, man, that there is no time in there? to spend on the things that are important on, that, on, on you and God and thinking through the important issues of life? Or have you just kind of grown lazy and not investing in the things that are truly rewarding? A third thing is, is this, is, is, that, um, is that we get deceived. This is one of the things that was really important to Paul as he was talking to the people of Colossae in this letter. In verse 4, he says this, I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. In other words, there's, there, there is going to be people out there who are going to speak to you, and they're going to tell you that there is another way besides Christ. And it's going to sound plausible. It's going to sound, oh, that makes sense. And we're going to get deceived. I remember talking to... Uh, a gentleman uh, been a, that had claimed to be a Christian for a long, long time. And I had known this man for a long time and gone to church with him for a long time. And, uh, and I remember having a conversation with him because I was talking to him about how, and this was a, a number of years ago now, but, but I said, I remember talking to him, hey, we're gonna, we want the church to be able to, to, to be equipped to learn how to tell 
tell people about Jesus and, and all that sort of stuff. And his comment to me was this. He says, oh, you'll never be able to get people to tell others about Jesus. And I went, what? He goes, yeah, I bet you 1% of our congregation will even buy into that. And I went, what? The importance about telling people about Jesus, he goes, yeah, I don't really feel like I need to. He said, you know, Christianity's worked for me for a long time, but for other people, the Koran works, and for other people, Buddhism works, and for other people, you know, Mormonism works, and, for other, and so I don't feel like I have to tell anybody anything because I've just found what works for me. Now, I don't know how that sounds to you. But that comment reveals a fundamental misunderstanding of who Christ is and what salvation is. Because you see, when we talk, and the, and the uh, theme of this whole sermon series is greater than. And you see, Paul was concerned that people would be deceived, that there's something greater or something other than Christ that we can go, for, go with and we can, who we can walk with in order to make progress on our spiritual journey that will eventually end us up with eternal life. And see, when, and see there's a fundamental understanding we have to have about truth, too. Something is, two, two opposite things can't be true. It can't be raining out right now and sunny. One of those is true and one of those is not. And so when the Bible tells us something is true and then another religion or another belief system tells us something, else, one of those is true and we have to figure out one. Not everything can be true. That's essentially what this gentleman was telling me is that all of them are true enough. It's just what works for you is what happens to be true. And you see, the Bible sets out some things that are, they're, they're very contradictory for that because one of the things the Bible talks about is that Jesus is necessary for salvation. You see, one of, the, one of the greatest lies I think we can hear is this, is that Jesus is nice, but not necessary. Jesus is a nice addition to your life, but he's not a necessary addition. But the Bible says something very different. In John 14, 6, Jesus says this. I, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. It's a very exclusive statement. He says, no man comes to the Father but by me, except by me. And so that is, and so we have to say, is, if that is true, and the Bible says it's true, then, then any other argument out there in the world that says, yeah, but you can get to, you can get to heaven, you can get to God through this way, as well, that not both of those things can be true, only one. And so the Bible teaches that Jesus and Jesus alone is necessary for our salvation. He's just, just not just nice, a good option, but he's necessary for our salvation. Jesus is necessary not just to get us saved, but look at John 15, 5. Jesus is necessary for living a life pleasing to God. John 15, 5 says this, I am the vine, you are the branches, this is Jesus speaking. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Well, some things, not, not even something, nothing. And by, what he means by that is, yeah, you can walk around, you can live your life, you can do all that sort of stuff. But ultimately, none of the things you can do, if you do them apart from Christ, please God. And so Paul was concerned that these people would be deceived to pull away from Christ, to say, yes, I have Christ, but I can also believe in these other things. I can also trust in these other ways. I can also go in these other directions and believe these other things and have Christ. Paul says, all you need is Christ. He is everything, and you need to stay on track with Him. So how do we stay on track on our spiritual journey. Paul has a few things about how, we, how do we stay on track on our spiritual journey. The first thing is this, is that we need to stay together. One of the most important things that I see in this passage is this. You go back to verse 1 of Colossians. He says, For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you, for all those at Laodicea, for all who have not seen my face, that their hearts may be encouraged. And listen to this, being knit together in love. 
being knit together in love. Why did he say that? Why did he add that part? I want your hearts to be encouraged, so stay with Christ. No, he says, I want your heart to be encouraged, so be knit together in love. If you're going to be encouraged, if you're going to just go, man, I'm going to take the next step on my spiritual journey. If I'm going to do that, I need to surround myself with people who are going in the same direction. I need to surround myself with people who, when I get discouraged, they'll say, come on, you can do it. I need to surround myself with people who, when I get distracted, they slap me in the face and they say, hey, wake up. You're going in all these different directions and you really need to be focusing your life back on Him. You're getting off track. I need people like that. We all need people like that. We need people that when we're hearing the wrong things, listening to the wrong voices, they'll come in and they'll say, man, that doesn't sound right. That's not the way you should go. I went down that path before and I found out that that was the wrong way. Let me help you push you in the right direction. We need each other. This is one of the reasons that we encourage everyone at, at CME Community Church to be a part of a community group. Because it's, it's great to be here and listen to God's word and I pray that you're challenged and that you experience the presence of God here every Sunday morning. And yet there's something dynamic about sitting in a room facing other people and saying, hey man, this is what's going on in my life. Being able to talk to people and being able to be encouraged by other people's stories and being able to be that person who's the encourager, to be that person who's the one who wakes someone else up, to be that person who lifts someone and says, you could do it, come on, I'm praying for you, I love you. And we need those people in our lives. That's why Paul says, I want you to be encouraged and have your hearts knit together in love to invest yourself in Christian relationships. You you need to have friends all over the place. You need to have friends who are outside of the church. You need to have friends everywhere. But man, one thing I I told my my kids growing up, I, I want you to have all sorts of friends, friends at school, friends at church, friends everywhere. But man, it's the most important thing to have your best friends be ones who will challenge you in your walk with Christ, encourage you in your walk with Christ. And I want to ask you, if maybe you sense yourself getting off track, where are you at in your Christian relationships? And man, you may say, oh, I got a lot of them. How often in those Christian relationships do you talk about the Lord? Do you talk about where you're at spiritually? Do you talk about what you're reading in the Bible that week and how it's challenging you? Or is all the talk about about home decoration and crafts and and sports and whatever else. See, we've gotten distracted even in our Christian relationships, haven't we? We've somehow conned ourselves into thinking that we can focus on all these other things instead of on Christ and still make progress. Invest. Are you investing in relationships with people who are moving in the same direction as you with God? The second thing that we need to do to stay on track spiritually on our spiritual journey is to stay with Christ. And that may be, seem obvious, but it's something that Paul points out. Um. He says in verse 2 that the hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ. He wants them to invest in knowing Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 23 and 24 said this, But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Christ is the power of God in our life. Christ is the wisdom of God in our life. If we feel like, man, we're not making progress on this spiritual journey and I just need God's power in my life, it is to focus on Christ. If we feel like, I don't know the direction to go, I don't know where to, what's happening, I don't know what decisions to make, he says, focus on Christ, he's wisdom. 
He is all those things to us. And so the, in, the, in the passage we read before in John 15, 5, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, that is whoever lives, whoever makes his dwelling in me, we need to saturate ourselves with the person of Christ. The last way that we can stay on track spiritually is to stay on track. Is to stay on track. Well, you know what that takes? It takes intentional choices. Intentional choices. It means that we don't let life happen to us. It means that we make up. Uh, um, it, it means that we wake up and we make a schedule for that day, and we include God in that schedule. One of the things that I heard early in my Christian life that that I have that I have done especially in my life when it gets really busy and necessary is i will put in my calendar a meeting and i and i know it's a meeting with god somebody calls me up and said hey are you free at such and such to meet with me i'll look at my calendar and go no i've already got a meeting because i had to make an intentional choice that that i i needed for myself to stay on track spiritually, to make intentional choices to stay on track. And so I I put God into my schedule. Otherwise, the tyranny of the urgent will knock him out really quickly. And so it's to make those choices. And as we look at Colossians, that verses 6 and 7 says this, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. So take each individual step and say, I am walking this one with Christ and this one with Christ and this one with Christ. Walk with Him. Rooted and built up. Rooted. Having a firm foundation in who Christ is. I know who He is. He is my way to heaven. He is my forgiver. He is my leader. He is my hope. He's my salvation. He's everything. And I'm rooted in him. And, 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 and now I'm going to build my life in him as well. I'm not just going to be rooted in Christ and build my life any way I want. I'm going to make intentional choices to build my life up in Christ so that I'm established in the faith just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. I love that he ends this in abounding in thanksgiving. Because, the, because no matter where we're at on the journey, if we're discouraged, distracted, being deceived right now, there is always hope. There is because there is always Christ. There is always forgiveness. There is always um, grace for us each and every day if we're walking with Him. And all it takes is to just say, God, thank you that you're there. In the midst of my wandering, in the midst of my distraction, in the midst of my discouragement, when I had no hope, you are here. And God, I'm thankful for you. What do you have to thank God for today? You know, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, man, maybe you're sitting here this morning and you're thinking, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not there on my spiritual journey. I, I don't even think I have a spiritual journey. I don't even know if I know God or want to know God. That's somewhere. That's that's part of the journey, is getting from the point where where you're not even sure you want to know Him to the point where maybe I do want to know Him. And if that's where you are today, man, keep coming back. Keep keep investigating Christ. Find somebody who's in this building who, who knows God and say, why did you, what has God done for you? Why did you make that step to know God? That's a great part of the journey. And I'm so glad you're here. And if you're here this morning and and you've already made this decision at some point in your life to walk with God and and to believe in Christ, how are you doing on that journey? Have you been discouraged and stalled out? Have you been distracted by the urgent and the easy? Or have you stopped making intentional choices to walk with God? Because you've been deceived to think other things are important. Other things um, are just as valuable or more valuable than Him. I want to encourage you today. Just as Paul says, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Walk, a walk with God is worth it. 
It is more valuable than anything else. And, and, and my prayer is that maybe this morning we would begin to gain perspective. And we would realize that we can abound in thanksgiving because God is there with us on the journey. He's not impatient with us on the journey. Aren't you glad that God's not impatient, that he's not like, come on. We can get like that. We're kind of like, oh, man, he must be so frustrated. I'm not frustrated. He's in it for the long haul. Yeah, he wants us to make steps, but he's showing us grace and mercy along the way. And I want you to hear the voice of God today, and that is be encouraged. Come follow me. I'm worth it. Will you pray with me this morning? God, I want to thank you for Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for who he is and the salvation that he's brought and that he can bring to each of our lives. God, I thank you that you are patient with us on the journey that you walk with us, that you guide us, that you promise to be our wisdom, that you promise to be our strength. And so, God, we, we look to you today. And, Lord, for those who are here this morning and they're discouraged, I pray that you would encourage them, that you would remind them of your deep love for them. For those of us, maybe, Lord, who have gotten distracted by the urgent or the easy, Lord, I pray that you would help us to see the eternal worth of who you are. And Lord, pursue after you and put the other distractions behind us. And Lord, if we've been deceived into thinking that there's another way besides Christ, if there's another way, Lord, to live in a, way, in a life that's pleasing to you, Lord, I pray that you would help us to see your truth to trust your truth. I pray that we would surround ourselves with those who are on this journey as well. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray all these things. Amen.